Hello everyone, welcome to my channel where I share my insights and experiences as the wife of a tree doctor and co-owner of Warner's Tree Surgery. We have a company that treats sick trees in Mesa, Arizona. My name is Pat and today I want to talk to you about a fascinating discovery that NASA made about the microbes that live in the upper layers of the atmosphere. These microbes are called pathogens, and they are tiny organisms that can cause diseases in plants and animals. NASA SOFIA Observatory detected a type of heavy oxygen in the Earth's upper atmosphere, which is a signature of biological activity. This means that there are living bacteria in the air, some of which may have come from outer space. How do these bacteria spread around the world, and how do they affect the raindrops and the plants below? Let's find out. According to a study by researchers from Spain and the United States, these microbes travel in water films and are carried by large air masses and aerosols. They use data from NASA satellites and DNA analysis of the microorganisms they collected from the atmosphere. They found that these microbes can survive harsh conditions, such as high radiation, low pressure, and extreme temperatures. They also found that some of these microbes are similar to those found on the ground, while others are completely new and unknown. One of the possible impacts of these microbes is that they can affect the formation and properties of raindrops. Raindrops are formed when water vapor condenses on tiny particles in the air, such as dust, pollen, or bacteria. The size, shape, and number of raindrops can influence the amount and distribution of precipitation, as well as the climate and weather patterns. Some of these microbes may also act as ice nucleators, which means they can trigger the freezing of water droplets at higher temperatures. This can affect the formation of snowflakes, hail, and frost. Another possible impact of these microbes is that they can cause diseases in trees and other plants when it rains. At Warner's Tree Surgery we have been working with diseases for over 50 years, and I can tell you that we still know very little about what causes them, but we have found that by doing the things that promote a healthy immune system in the trees and by dealing with the insects we can keep them healthy and significantly aid in their recovery if they're sick. Many tree diseases are caused by fungi, bacteria, viruses, and other pathogens that infect the leaves stems, roots, or fruits of the plants. Some of these pathogens are specific to certain species, while others can affect multiple hosts. Some of them are spread by insects, wind, or water, while others can survive in the soil or on plant debris. Climate change can also influence the occurrence and severity of tree diseases, by altering the temperature, moisture, and CO2 levels in the environment. For example, increased rainfall, waterlogged soil, flooding, and water runoff can create favorable conditions for some pathogens, such as Phytophthora root rot, anthracnose, powdery mildew, and black spot. These diseases can cause leaf spots, twig cankers, dieback, and defoliation, which can reduce the growth, health, and survival of the trees. On the other hand, drought, heat, and frost can stress the trees and make them more susceptible to other pathogens, such as bark beetles, borers, and rusts. These diseases can cause girdling, boring, wilting, and mortality, which can affect the structure, function, and diversity of the forests. With the discovery of the microbes in the upper atmosphere, we have to consider the possibility that some of these pathogens may come from the air, and that they may introduce new and unknown diseases to the trees and plants below. We also have to consider the possibility that some of these pathogens may interact with the existing ones, and that they may create new and complex disease dynamics. We used to think we knew a lot about tree diseases, but with this new information, we probably don't know what's really affecting the trees. This is why we need more research and monitoring to understand the origin, distribution, and impact of these microbes, and to develop effective strategies to protect our forests and ecosystems. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learned something new and interesting. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will try to answer them. See you next time.